Next up, we have a presentation from Lithium Power International with the ticker code LPI. LPI is a pure play lithium company focused on the development of Chile's next high-grade lithium mine. To tell us more, I will hand you over to Managing Director and CEO, Christabel Garcia Hudebro. Good afternoon, Christabel. How are you, Jane? And thank you for this invitation. It's quite interesting to be able to tell you know, the current status of, of LPI as we have had a very busy year. Wonderful. Well, let me bring up your presentation. Okay, great. So just to start, uh, Lithium Power is it's a, quite a diversified, we are a lithium developer, we're quite a diversified lithium company in terms of our asset base with our uh, uh, flagship project, uh, uh, Maricunga project in Chile based on, on Brian, of course, and, uh, and also with our exploration assets in, in, in WA. I think this slide is very interesting. Everyone has, uh, has seen you know, a lot of graphs of how the demand will grow and how the offer will not be able to match that demand. However, I think this slide is a different way to see it. It shows the last you know, announcement from each one of the car manufacturers in the world on how they are moving forward towards this uh, you know, transformation, this electrification of, of their production. So based, based on that, on the figure on the left, it, it shows you know, a breakdown on how the demand from each one of these companies and these car manufacturers will grow within the next 10 years. Okay, so our flagship project, Maricunga project here in Chile, we are located in the third region of Chile, right you know, within the lithium triangle where all you know, the biggest uh, brine projects are located. I think this slide summarized very well what the Maricunga project is today and uh, how we have been significantly de-risking the project during the last six years. We started uh, with our first exploration campaigns in, in 2017. Uh, so far, we have drilled more than 8,000 uh, 8, meters uh, at the Maricunga Salar. At the Maricunga Salar, we owned more than 2.5 thousand hectares right in the middle of the Salar. Of, uh, in 2017, we issued our first uh, NI43 and York uh, uh, standards report, resource report, with more than 2 million tons of LCE measured and indicated. Also, at that time, we decided to start with our pilot evaporation ponds that, that we operated for more than 30 months. And we issued our first uh, PEA with very interesting economics. Uh, by 2018, we decided to move forward straight with, uh, uh, with engineering for which uh, we hired uh, Worley as our main engineering company. And we started working on the definitive uh, feasibility study of the project. And also on the, on the production side, uh, we decided to award the contract for design and of course testing of our production process to GEA Messe in Germany, which is one of the, probably one of the top three you know, suppliers on, on the brine lithium industry, uh, with which we produce our first samples of lithium battery, uh, uh, lithium carbonate battery grade uh, by the end of 2018. Also, during that year, we started working on uh, the preparation of, of our environmental impact assessment, our EIA, with the Montgomery Watson, which was acquired after by Stantec. And um, we submitted our EIA to the Chilean authorities by the end of 2018. By the beginning of 2019, we released our first uh, definitive feasibility study, which was based on 100% of our mining concessions. Uh, by then, uh, our exploration uh, uh, went down to only 200 meters depth because you know it's so rich. We have concentrations over a thousand ppm's uh, of lithium there with with very low impurities, so the ratios are very attractive for for lithium production. 
Um, and uh, because of that, we decided to move forward and stop the exploration there. We had more than enough research with those resources to support a 20,000 annual tons uh, production project for 20 years. Um, we also, starting once we released the DFS, we were in the middle of the evaluation and approval process for our uh, uh, environmental permits. Uh, and we decided to start uh, to start our EPC bidding processes for which we uh, invited a, a, a just three or four international engineering companies of, of which we received the first round of proposals. And finally, we selected you know, two companies, which were Bechtel and a consortium formed by Worley and a Chilean company. Um, we also, by the end of 2018, uh, because part of our concessions are, you know, a, a, a very new, so we needed a, a special permit. We decided to partner with the, the Chilean government for that part of, of our project. And uh, by the beginning of 2020, and this was just before the COVID started, we received our environmental approval, which is quite a significant milestone here in Chile as we do have a very strict environmental a, a, a regulation. And uh, also, well, once the COVID started, we were in the middle of, of the process for, for the a, a financing structuring of the project. And um, it wasn't that the COVID you know, closed the market, not at all, but what happens was that there was just, you know, uh, so much uncertainty in terms of, of the definition of certain numbers that we decided we wanted to be very responsible. We really didn't want to, to make a mistake on any CAPEX estimations. And uh, we decided to slow down things. And because by, by, by then we had so much information on the, on the Maricunga Solar and the project was growing so fast, we decided to you know, speed up things by moving forward with stack strategy by the end of 2020. And uh, uh, we divided the project into two stages. Stage one, uh, which is based on half of our mining concessions. Um, even though it's a little bit smaller than the original project, it will have an implied capacity of 15,000 annual tons. It's quite an interesting you know, uh, project. The subsequent stage or a future stage two, uh, in the medium term will have a, probably a similar size. And uh, well, by, by, by uh, the end of 2020, after we took this decision, you know, we speeded up all the processes, we resumed all the activities. First, uh, uh, with engineering companies, we decided to update our feasibility study because even though the project is exactly the same in terms of engineering, design, you know, location, layout, et cetera, it was a little bit slower, a, a little bit uh, smaller, sorry. And um, at the same time, we decided to, you know, because we were having a, a people working uh, again at the camp up uh, at site, we decided to um, increase our resources going down to 400 meters depth now, which uh, resulted being something you know very very interesting, and uh, we had uh, very positive news uh, uh, last week, with an increase on our resources for this first first stage of around ninety percent from our original resources measured and indicated. I mean, which again will be more than enough as to you know support our twenty years my life uh, uh, for this first stage. And also confirmed that the deposit is still open at depth. So now we do have a new exploration target down to 550 meters, which led us still, you know, having a, a very, you know, a potential a, a growth a, 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 at the Mariconga project. Um, now, in terms of uh, the engineering, we are expecting to release our uh, updated DFS by the end of uh, this year, during November. Numbers uh, are, and the economics are very, very attractive uh, for that project. And uh, uh, we will be definitely on the first year of the cash cost in terms of, of, uh, of, of the brine industry, I mean. And um, 
And that, as part of all these processes and, and activities that we resume, uh, uh, one of the things that uh, we you know, work back on was with these uh, uh, strategic agreements. And uh, by the end of April this year, we announced uh, uh, the signature of a, a, this strategic alliance with Mitsui, which has a wide scope. On the first side, you have on the financing side, Mitsui will act as the off-taker uh, for the project at market value, so no, no discounts there. And also Mitsui will participate as both a strategic partner on the equity side and with you know, a, a part of the debt for which they are bringing a, a, both the JBIC, the Japanese Bank for International Cooperation, and the JOKMEC, those two you know, Japanese banks, uh, with which, along with the recovery on the lithium prices, we are back you know, aiming for at least a 50, between 50 to 60% leverage for this project. So it's, it's again, quite an interesting, you know, structure. And on the other side of the deal with Mitsui, um, they, by the way, they will also have some financing rights for, you know, the, the subsequent stages or stage two in, in Marikunga. But also with them, we started working a couple of years ago with Marikunga Brian only, testing and helping them on the uh, working with them on the development of this new DLE technology, direct lithium extraction technology, along with one of Mitsui's technological partners. Um, results were, have been very good. We were able by the beginning of uh, uh, this year uh, to build the pilot plant. Uh, it was built at the Kobe port area in Tokyo and started its operations by the beginning of uh, April this year. Now discussions have been around dismantling the plant in Tokyo and bringing it back to, to, to Chile to site at Marikunga to continue with the tests. Uh, of course, this COVID situation and, and, and the borders, uh, uh, and, and because the borders have been closed, have been delaying a little bit those, uh, uh, that process. But now, you know, situation in Chile, it's, it's quite good. We have more than 85% of the population with the two doses of the vaccine. Uh, and the authorities just announced that our borders, uh, you know, are going to be open, open back again without these, you know, long periods of, of quarantines when, 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 when you get in, 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 into the country. So uh, that will let us, you know, to move forward with Mitsui with this uh, 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 testing of this new technology, which we expect to be the base for, you know, what will be a future stage two of this project, as the stage one will be based on traditional technology, a very well proven technology, which is something of also very attractive for all the financial institutions that have been working with us. Like I said, in terms of the economics, we do have, you know, very attractive economics, uh, especially with this increase on, you know, the, the uh, resources the, for the stage one. Now, the interesting part is that for the stage two, which also comprise like the other half of our mining concessions, uh, exploration still is only down to 200 meters. We do have a big exploration target there. And, you know, having proved that, uh, the first stage concessions, you know, already delivered this, this huge and significant increase on the resources. It's, you know, the probability for us to be able to expand our resources further in the near future is, is, is uh, uh, also, you know, very certain. And uh, that shows basically the huge potential that the Marikunga project will be able to have in the future. And basically why we expect that this project, once fully built, you know, in the upcoming years, will be a at least a thirty thousand annual tons project of production. Now, um, like I said, in terms of cash cost, you know, we will be on the first quarter. Uh, uh, one very important thing: the, the JV company here in Chile which is controlled by lithium power is the owner of its mining concessions. So basically we don't have to pay those, you know, a special a, a, a royalties that uh, 
both SQM and Albemarle, which are, are by far the main you know, producers here in South America, are subject to. So in summary, this is what basically we are, you know, it's all about. Sustainability have been in the center of our design since uh, the beginning. And ESG is one of the, you know, the pillars of this company. From an environmental point of view, we have been reducing the use of water, which is not that much, but we will we reduce that use of water from the existing producers, established producers, in more than 80%. And at least 30% of that, you know, fresh water will be, you know, produced by ourselves with uh, through recoveries during our production process. Also, you know, only renewable energy, solar renewable energy will be used uh, in this project, which we do have a lot at the north of Chile. So from an environmental point of view, we're aiming to uh, be the first carbon neutral brine producer, lithium brine producer in South America. Now, um, we do from, an, from a social point of view, we do have excellent relationships with indigenous communities. They have been part of uh, the development and the design of this project since day one. And they will be part of the benefits that this project will generate through a, a very small, you know, but significant a, a, a sharing on the revenues in the future, which in present value will account for more than a, a $20 million. Now, we do have a, 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 we already produced three years ago our first sample of lithium carbonate. So this is not new for us. Our production process, it has been tested, you know, a, 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 a very in detail since the first, our first production, we only, we have been focused only on the optimization of our production process. And today we're reaching purities that range between 99.7 to 99.90 something, uh, which at the end of the day, it gives a wide, you know, range of, you know, product qualities to our off takers, uh, as not all the companies has the same requirements. Now, this is a project that have only, you know, been developed and we have only worked with tier one engineering companies since day one, which shows how serious we are. All, you know, the supplies needed for this project have been secured years ago, water supply, ports, logistics, uh, energy and electricity. We do have a transmission line built outside all the roads, you know, are already built. Uh, so basically today, Maricunga is a fully permitted project that uh, shows, you know, that this is really one of the most advanced uh, lithium projects in South America. Now, what are we expecting for, uh, for the next, for the upcoming months? Uh, we continue working on the financing structuring, which is of course, one of our, our priorities today. Um, we have been receiving a lot of approaches from different companies, regardless, we have this agreement with Mitsui. And um, it's, it's, it's you know, very clear that everyone wants a piece of this. Um, we're expecting to close be able to close all these uh, final agreements uh, during the first half of uh, 2022. And because like I said, this is a fully permitted project, we're expecting to you know, be in a position to take uh, the final investment decision immediately after that and uh, to start the construction by the end of you know, the first half of 2022. Um, so basically that will put us into commercial production by the end of you know 2024 beginning of 2025 it was a great presentation and um yeah, I know a lot of late. things to say about about Marico. yeah <laughs> i know it's very late over there in chile um and i thank you for joining us today and any webinar attendees who would like to see more from the presentation it has been lodged on the asx but christopher thanks for joining us thank you